Mitch, like yesterday, about wanting to get back on track after obviously what happened in the fourth, in the fourth quarter against Cairns. What have you guys been doing yesterday and today to rectify that? Yeah, look, I mean, um, it's something, you know, we kind of, if we could rewind the clock, we want to take back and, and redo, but we can't. And, you know, we've got to look to Illawarra and look how we can learn from those, uh, those mistakes we had there late in the fourth. And I think it's going to make us a better team for it. Um, you know, we've had a couple of late close games, but, you know, having that one go the wrong direction, uh, the side we didn't want, is kind of, you know, uh, propelled us to think more about what we did there in the fourth rather than, you know, just chalking up a win. How did CJ react straight after you know that the YCA had been animated on, on the court side? How did he react in the immediate aftermath and how's that compared to what he's been saying this week? Yeah, I think he was, he was frustrated, um, you know, and kind of just looking inside, he was, uh, you know, saying, look, I put, put his hand up and thinks that we all could have done a better job collectively. Um, which is what we needed. I think we needed someone to kind of give us a rocket and get us back on track. And since then, we've he's watched the film. We've all watched the film individually, um, and we know what we need to get better at. And we're trying to work on that every day. And, and all focus is on Illawarra now. And we hope it doesn't get to those late stages again. But the next time it does, we'll be prepared. Illawarra, with well, a few games left in the season, and the way it's looking pretty tight, sort of in the space between about three, three and seven or eight. Do, do you think this is a must win against the Warriors? Yeah, look, for us, every game's a must-win right now. Um, you know, we've got a one-game-at-a-time mentality. Um, since before the last game, we're, we're on a roll, and we kind of want to get back to that winning feeling and rolling again. Um, we've got nine games left, and we want to win them all. You know, whether we will or won't, we don't know yet, but the best we can do is just come on a practice court every day, do the best we can, and come game time, be as prepared as we can be. How have you found this season compared to years gone by? I think average about 30 minutes last year. Two this season, sort of building that back, uh, back up as the season's gone on. How do you found sort of having to set up for a different role this year? It's been good. You know, I think we've got such a talented group, and you know, at some point we knew everyone had to sacrifice. And and for me, it was on the minutes side, which which I'm very grateful for because we have some talented basketball players on this team. Um, and you know, it's just coming in and doing the best I can to try and help our team. You know, one night I play upwards of 25 to 28 minutes. The other nights it's you know 18 to 19. But as long as we get a win at the end of the end of the game, we're happy with that. But everyone's contributing, you know, and, and on our team, we're so deep that anyone who steps on the court is, you know, in the positive all the time, which is good for us. How do you balance that sort of the side of obviously as a professional athlete, you want to play as much as you can, and also knowing that you've got these guys that have come into of, of such high quality. Yeah, look, it's a balancing act for sure. Um, one that you know is just a part of the game. It's it's the highs and lows of it. Um, but as a player, you have to navigate it as well. You know, I think uh, at the same time, if you can look at it and be like, look, why me? Or you can be like, okay, I uh, get on the court. You know, I just got to put my best foot forward and, and bring the best positive energy for the team at that time that's needed. Um, Ian Clark, obviously, been for about 10 days or so now. How, how's his fitness doing? Fitness is getting much, much better. Um, you know, I think each game is built. This is his third game now. So he's got his legs under him. He's very vocal. Great teammate, and you know, and someone that we're excited to kind of have play these next nine regular season games with, and leading into finals is going to be a big key for us. How's he as a, as a leader within the, within the camp? Very vocal, you know. I think something that we needed uh, a different voice, a different perspective, and a, an experienced voice as well. So we're really grateful to have him um, after games, in huddles, in timeouts. He's always very vocal. You know, he's done it at the highest level won a championship with Sydney last year and we're hoping that he brings that experience with him uh, this year and obviously going forward. Does bringing in a new player midway through the season sort of shake things up in, in, a, in a different way? Obviously, up until the Cairns game, it was three, right? Yeah, look, I think it can um, at times, but with us, it's, it's been great. I think it's a testament to Ian's character and, and the group we have. You know, he's been able to fit in seamlessly. Um, you know, I think they're building up his minutes game by game. Um, you know, I think last minute he clocked about 19 minutes in the game and we expect that to increase as the, as the season goes on. But, you know, being such a veteran and a true professional, he's just fit into the team and contributed. Um, even the first game where he didn't play, he was really vocal and helping guys, you know, navigate the, the little nuances of the game and come down the stretch. You know, he's been there and done it at the NBA level and, and he's helping us here right now. You guys have been so good at home this season. How important is it that you have a couple of backs back this weekend? Yeah, it's important to take care of that. Um, obviously, getting that home crowd is, is a huge key for us and, and it propels us forward. So 
we want to use that momentum from you know the Adelaide faithful who've come in week after week, and I think we've come in, had a couple record record setting crowd numbers there, which is really good for us. Um, and yeah, we want to keep winning at home, and then obviously win on the road as well. So it's a huge one for us this weekend. Uh, we want to take care of these two uh, before we look any further. We've seen that sort of across the league, a lot of teams getting record crowds. What do you think it is that's helping helping the NBL grow so quickly in sort of the last few years? Yeah, look, I think um, a lot of it's on the backing of the national team success, um, just having more participation in basketball and just a better product. You know, I think as the years go on, the NBL has done a phenomenal job of growing the game and also the teams at their local level, you know, through the work we do in the community and all the other teams in their local communities as well. It's just getting some lifelong fans and some fans that are generational. So, you know, uh, a father may have been a fan when he was younger, now his son or daughter is a fan. And, and that goes a long way to obviously building that relationship with the players, but also with the club that we hope that continues throughout the years and we keep setting record numbers as the years go on here in Adelaide.